this started or how is it? Um, do you have internships um, at DSC and how is the placement cell there? Oh, Ma'am, actually our batch started late. So for our batch only, there were no internships. But for this uh, upcoming batch, I mean, 23 to 25, they have their internship, which will help. Uh, I think it will be in summer, summer break. So our uh, final placement will start uh, some, somewhere in November first week or October last week. Orientation will be, I think, on tomorrow or something. So yeah, placement almost ho jata hai almost sabka. but uh, i think this time uh, many placement coordinators have told that uh, due to recession thing it will be something less but everyone will get almost okay i get that so um, so since you're mentioning that there was no internship uh, were students definitely. able to get the internship from outside or how is how was the process uh, uh, if you or Kushi could go ahead and elaborate on this. I think uh, some of the, it was not allowed. Professor had told that uh, summer okay. because there were no breaks for our batch. Uh, okay. uh, continuous lectures and everything was there. So there was no time. But I think some of the students have uh, got internship. So I don't know how, but they have got on their own. There were no involvement of placement cell in this. But for final placement, of course, there will be their involvement. Okay, sure. I get that. Uh, so, uh, so Yamini, we'll come back to the question that I wanted to understand. What made uh, you... Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I would yes, like sure. to add on to yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I have the statistics for 21 batch. So uh, if that would be helpful since we didn't have any internship drive for our batch. Mm -hmm. So uh, more or less, uh, there were uh, the average stipend for the internship was 70k per month and the highest being 1.25 at that time and uh, um, most of the uh, internship offers were made in uh, data analytics so this is all i know about that batch i get that so um sorry since you mentioned about data analytics uh during our time only data was being taught as part of uh, the course so have students be have they started with R, Python, or any new uh, you know coding course, or is it still Stata that is being taught? No, we are being taught R right now in our second year. A paper okay. is being offered by okay. uh, Devesh sir, and uh, we would be taught R. Got it. But Python is still not offered as part of the course at DSC, right? No, not. Okay, okay. I mean, because most of the jobs are now in data analytics, even if it is from an economics background. So just wanted to understand if students need to gain some additional coding experience from outside or some other courses that they should be doing. I think if you have these skills, then definitely it would be helpful for you when you are sitting for your interviews. But uh, I have seen some of my seniors who didn't have any no prior knowledge of uh, these soft uh, coding languages uh, also secured great offers in their placement. So uh, it totally depends on what you have done and how best you have done. Like if you're writing something in your CV, you should be thorough with it, uh, even though it is uh, not at par with your batchmate, but at least what you're writing in it, uh, you should know what it is. You should not be flexing anything uh, which you haven't done. Right. Yes, true. Got it. Okay, so Yamini, we will come back to you and uh, I would really like to understand what made you choose IGIDR over DSC and, uh, you know, how the experience has been now and how is the placement at IGIDR? Um, so I think uh, the decision to choose between IGIDR and DSC comes with a lot of personal strengths and weaknesses uh, for every every person. So like for me, I, I had done my bachelor's from Hansraj and because as, as usual, we get involved in a lot of societies and extra curriculars. So by the end of the third year, I was literally fearful of, you know, whether I would be able to handle the kind of maths and quants BSc and ISI have to offer or whether, where, where do I like to uh, go ultimately in my career? 
so first reason for me to choose igidr over dsc is one because it focuses a lot on developmental studies whereas dsc and more prominently isir very quant heavy prepare for dsc in order to be able to crack each and every exam that i'm given but developmental studies was the primary reason i prioritized igidr over dsc so this was the first reason then the second reason was having spent quite a lot of time in being a student of delhi university i knew that the ideal will ratio is sometimes a little screwed up in a uh, university of delhi so in fact when i was in hansraj we had some 80 students in one class so i just wanted to be at a place where i could be one to one interact but i had heard from a lot of seniors that at igidr we, we are hardly 30 maximum 33 students a batch so that gives you more time to imbibe in you what's going on what you're being taught this this was the second reason third reason was somewhere the hope of earning a bi internship to gain exposure uh, which you do like the top 5 students of the batch at igidr are offered rbi internships then uh, last reason was where i wanted to head towards after my masters so more more than focusing on a career in corporate i wanted to go towards policy making and it was not something which would require a lot of quants but yes it would require a lot of econometrics and analytical skills that would very well be gotten it ig idea so this is the fourth reason my inherent interest towards public policy and a lot of that stuff that made me for dsc so these were the reasons got it so you know you mentioned this point that top 5 students um, go to rbi is it is it something that happens every year is it a compulsory thing for sure that happens this 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 happens with every batch i mean i don't know the batches next to me but the next batches prior to me this this happened okay i mean that that's a really good point and how is the placement i at igidr overall so i've heard that uh, the the package that you get is at par with dsc isi and other colleges is that true there are only 30 students it's the placement cell makes a lot of effort to get 100% of the batch placed so in the batches most of the batches prior to us and again in our batch as well 100% of the students were placed who applied for it and uh, as far as the highest packages were concerned in our batch it was plpa which was offered by american express and then in the batches next to us like the batch right next to me the msc 2021 to 2023 they were offered the highest package of 23l if not more but it's as far like it's as good as, as what bsc of got it so it's approximately 24 lakhs that is offered sure i get that thank you so so vivek what about you you mentioned that you know you took an year drop before uh, you went to dsc how was it i mean many students uh, they usually give up uh, you know during this year drop or they feel very demotivated how is it how do you cope up that one year break and how do you make sure that you make the maximum use of it during that period yeah like uh, for me it wasn't like really a completely a year break because uh, in 2021 also i itself i cleared the exam of gokhale ift and uh, madras school of economics and i got myself enrolled in msc in the course of uh, financial economics so i was i studied there for a period of 3 months and then uh, results again came out in the month of december and it was pretty late so somehow i couldn't clear the examination by just i was lagging behind by 3 marks in the entrance and also by merit i was and couldn't do uh, couldn't make by i think just it was 0.2% something i said i guess so it was really a bad luck for me that year 
but then after results like uh, i thought like i can i if i take a drop then i could make it in the, the very next year so in december i was uh, i couldn't make it and i was in at home i belong from jharkhand so two months again two after two months i came back to delhi i started preparing and then again in, in august by the starting of the august uh, i igidia results came and i went over there and again i start uh, studying there over there and i really gave up my preparation for dsc but as i had filled my uh, a form of dsc then i gave i gave the examination and i cleared then it was really it's it's not i can't say that it is very easy like because it's you have given you up your year to for preparation it, it is like like if you don't make it everything comes into your mind but again i took uh, i had my mentors my parents like they were no you can do it you just you, you need to be consistent and that that's the thing that really works consistent con- consistency and hard work which really pays off and like after going into even to igdr i left studying for dsc but still i could make it because i was consistent throughout my last 4 to 5 months and which really helped me to clear the examination and i think um, you know once you join a masters program even though uh, it may not be so for example i know many of my friends who joined somewhere or the other and during that one year they actually learned a lot from their professors there that helped them to clear the exam also yeah right okay so so prajwal since you're working can you tell how uh, the placement opportunities at isir and also you know how much do they value a person coming from isir in the corporate world yeah so the placement opportunities are pretty diversified i would say you are offered you are offered roles from you know uh, investment banks in quantitative modeling uh, model validation profiles you can offer you are offered roles from data science firms and i think some of my juniors also went to startups uh, where they are working in data science teams so that's also a really good uh, experience and then you can work in consulting firms as well so there is a lot of diversity uh, uh, i think some of my seniors are working in rbi as well so so uh, there is a lot of diversity in terms of placement uh, you can go to any sector you like uh, because of the skills that isi equips you with Uh, especially the quantitative skills and also the programming skills so i remember in my batch there was one course in r programming i'm not sure if it's continuing as well but in my batch it was there uh and then in the corporate sector i think uh, it's more about your skills it's uh, it becomes less about your college over time and it becomes more about you know how you are upskilling yourself uh, uh how you are good at you know working in teams and uh, you know if you can really add value to your organization it, the thing about college is that initially maybe for uh, during the initial placements or maybe in the initial one year maybe people look at your college but then after that it becomes about your skills and uh, what you can bring to the table so yeah true so uh, currently uh, what exactly is your role and uh, you know if you could just tell if economics does play a role once you are into that world corporate world yeah yeah so uh, currently i'm working at kpmg uh, as a consultant in the financial risk management division so i would say that i've worked on a variety of projects uh, during my almost two year term here so i've worked on default prediction models for uh, non so for nbfc clients uh, i've worked on strategy projects for uh, life insurance companies then i've also worked on some natural language processing models where you you know you need a lot of background even if you don't have a background if you can you know learn and catch up in neural networks and and i regularly use python uh, in my job for you know different kind of either model validation or model development work so definitely i would say the quantitative skills and the programming skills play a lot of role in your corporate career and uh, economics as such it's a i would say it's more about a, rather than about the specific theorems and specific models it's more about a way of thinking and a way of analyzing problems so that way of uh, thinking about problems definitely helps you in corporate sector if you are able to think in a structured manner and you know go about solving the client's problems it definitely plays a very important role yeah true true so um, when you know when um, i was uh, 
sitting for my final placements i still remember that data science had just come into this uh, this world i mean it was too new and uh, we were given two two job roles one was a data scientist and one was something into sales and i preferred that you know i would go into sales but not data scientist because i thought that you know i was like i am not sure if it actually means something in india uh, but somehow somehow i don't know how uh, my parents they pushed me that you know you should be applying for data science and since then i think um, once i entered into this data science world i was pretty sure that this is this was the right decision and it has a lot to do so <clears throat> i really think that um, you know the kind of role that data science data analytics all of these offer they are very very closely linked to economics even though not directly applying economics knowledge but you know you are you're using a lot of your quantitative skills and i even i didn't know r at r or python when i joined but i think um, you you kind of learn these things if you're good at maths so mm. that really helps you right um, so so uh, vishali uh, we lost you in between i was asking you about the course that you were talking about what was that course and and is that is it a macroeconomic course that you were mentioning uh yes so my there was some kind of uh, there was some interruption with my internet i'm so sorry for that so uh, the course name was problems of accumulation it was the combination of growth theories mathematics and uh, like microeconomics it was combined and it used to be one of the most difficult courses uh, and it was a compulsory course taken by professor shubhruto goha and yeah uh, so we studied about growth models in that like ramsey model and harrod dormar model the extended version of that i get that so <clears throat> so vishali um, you know a lot of people when they have to choose between dsc and jnu at least it was there till our batch would would mention that if they have to do maybe civil services or phd then jnu used to be preferred over dsc so do you think that jnu offers you a research like environment or you know a different environment which helps you in civil services is, is there something in the air that will help you clear the exam uh so i believe that yeah this is partly true because uh, four of my batchmates were able to clear prelims this year and most of my seniors are in indian economic services and few of them work in rbi too so uh, there is something in the air i would partially say that uh, the interdisciplinary uh, nature of jnu like it's not like you are enrolled in an ma economics program so you can't study anything from international relations in second year you have the you have you can choose many courses from outside the center and that you know that uh, encourages you to think towards other things than economics and yeah like uh, and also civil services the the subject matter uh, the courses in jnu are more inclined towards theory and we have to write papers and that you know uh, it increases our uh, reading and writing skills so which i believe is quite beneficial for upsc preparation okay so so i get that so <clears throat> uh you know when you mentioned that you can take a course outside uh, econo economics is it is it only between what we see from outside sss sis or or you can take a course across any department how how is it uh so you can take any course outside the department some people took french some people took japanese just to you know uh just to explore so jnu gives you that freedom to explore and the professors they're so friendly they you can approach them anytime i still visit the campus and uh like they they talk to you about what do you want to do they offer you help in any way possible so uh like jnu is a very warm place and seniors are very helpful so yeah uh, 